All right, let's try the third PowerPoint. This is on theories of intelligence. And one of the big questions we have with intelligence is, is it one thing? Is Are you intelligent or not intelligent? Is it a general mental ability? Or is it a cluster of different abilities and you can be intelligent in one area and not in another? And do IQ tests measure it or should it be more broadly defined? And we will actually get more into IQ tests with um, a following PowerPoint, not so much in this one. A little bit of background, and we'll talk more about this later with other, um, with development and with problem solving when we get to thinking. But there are two main types of intelligence, crystallized intelligence, which is, if you think of a crystal, think of a hard rock, this is your hard intelligence, facts that you have memorized, things that you have memorized. It's your knowledge base. Um, this type of intelligence becomes stronger as we age and we learn more things and experience more things. So crystallized intelligence are those hard facts that you know and things that you've experienced. Fluid intelligence is your ability to solve problems. Okay, this is solving puzzles, figuring out how to program your VCR, or well, I guess now it would be a DVD player, uh, and now they're all automatic anyway. But figuring out how to use your iPhone. If you've watched your parents try and use an iPod or use an iPhone, um, you can see that possibly their fluid intelligence is not what it once was. Um, luckily for you guys, fluid intelligence peaks around adolescence. And that's about the strongest peak intelligence you're going to get. So if you look around you, the people around you, that's about as good at solving problems as they're ever going to get. For some of you, that's not so bad. For others of you, yeah, okay. Um, and then once you reach about 30, 40, it starts to decline. And so that's why your grandma, your great grandma, don't want iPhones, don't want you know these newfangled technology, because it involves problem solving. And so it is not uh, the ability they're strongest with. There are some people though pushing for doing Sudoku or Sudoku or whatever it is, and crossword puzzles, things like that. And doing more of that will help maintain some of your fluid intelligence, according to some people. All right, so let's look at the major theories of intelligence. The three that we're really going to look at are Spearman, Gardner, and Sternberg. Um, we're also going to talk very briefly about emotional intelligence because it's a term you might come across. So Spearman's general intelligence. Spearman believed that there was a G factor, and he thought that smart people were smart. And if you look around, one of the arguments for this, if you look at people who are in your classes, most people are in advanced everything. And they're the same people in your advanced science and advanced math and advanced English and all that. And so he felt that smart people were basically smart and there was one general intelligence factor. Um, he was looking at intelligence more as academic type of intelligence when he was doing this. And when we get to both uh, Sternberg and Gardner, you'll see why maybe Spearman, if you believe Spearman's intelligence, you kind of have to buy into the fact that intelligence is more of an academic skill. And so he believed um, with Terman, and I will give you background on IQ testing, and you'll uh, get Terman stuff in a follow-up PowerPoint, but he believed that there was one good IQ score and that that would basically tell you someone's abilities. Then we get to Gardner. Gardner believed that there were multiple intelligences. And I can tell you that when I was in college and was coming out, this was a huge idea. And that we would go on interviews to become a teacher and we'd have to talk about Gardner's multiple intelligences and how could we tap into somebody who had one intelligence in one area while in the same class someone had an intelligence in a different area. And it was a big deal. I think most people do kind of accept his idea now, but um, not as powerful a concept or as um, groundbreaking, as vital, as important to um, 
learning as we might have once thought it was, though I'm sure somebody listening to this will disagree with me. So let's go through what his intelligences are. He believed in linguistic intelligence, which is language. Examples of these, poet, writer, public speaker, native storyteller. And so it could vary from culture to culture how you would display this, these types of intelligences. But this had someone who had a way with words, with language. Um, logical, mathematical. These people might do very well in science, but especially in math, so the physics type of science. They would be very good at thinking things through logically. They like things in order. They think that way. They think very linear and very good at solving problems. Some of you may be very good at this. Others of you very weak in this, and you just can't understand how someone thinks that way. Musical intelligence. This is someone who's very talented in music. They get music. They get the rhythm. They get you know, how to sing, they get how to create music. Um, despite how beautiful I sing, <clears throat> yes, how beautiful I sing, uh, I am not very musically intelligent. I do appreciate good music, but am not, I have no rhythm. Let's just put it that way. And I uh, have been accused of being tone deaf. Spatial intelligence. These people are able to see spatial connections. Um, they could be an architect. They are able to manipulate things. They are able to see things. People in tech ed who are very good at construction, things like this. Um, artists who are um, very, oftentimes we think of it as people who are creating art, maybe not necessarily, though I guess it would be painters too, but uh, sculptors, things like that. They're very into relationships between objects. They can also parallel park like nobody's business. Body kinesthetic intelligence. This is someone who is very good at controlling their movements. They're very good with their body. They're very good um, at moving around, at creating things with their body. Um, these people are very coordinated. They can dance. Athletes are, have the strength of intelligence. Interpersonal intelligence. This person understands other people. They're able to work with other people, maybe to the point of manipulating other people. They know how to have people work together. Um, if you look at the examples here, the politician, the salesperson, some of people are able to be, go out there and convince people to buy stuff that they don't need. Other people, yeah, don't have that skill. So interpersonal is other people. Intrapersonal and if you think of intramural back from middle school, you would play just in your own school against each other. Intermural was between other schools. So intrapersonal is in yourself. You understand your own motives, your own intentions. Philosophy. This one gets maybe kind of hard to measure and maybe a little bit harder to understand. And then naturalistic or naturalist intelligence. These people are very much into nature. Um, animals, uh, botany, they are very in tune with nature, in tune with the environment and the natural environment. So let's look at some examples of these. Uh, an example of someone who is linguistic, word smart, might be J.K. Rowling. Logical, mathematical, Albert Einstein. Musical, Rick Springfield. <clears throat> yes, you know, I wish that I had Jesse's girl. Again, that whole tone deaf thing, sorry. Spatial, these people, you know, for example, Frank Lloyd Wright, architect. Body kinesthetic, Aaron Rodgers. Intrapersonal, Plato, a philosopher. Um, he understood himself. Interpersonal, Mahatma Gandhi. Um, or anybody who's a great salesperson. Naturalistic, um, John Audubon. Audubon trees. Okay. Then we have Sternberg's triarchic theory of intelligence. Triarchic theory says that there are three basic mental abilities. He didn't like calling them intelligences. We talk about them when theories of intelligence, but Sternberg's not too fond of that. He likes to talk about mental abilities. And he almost saw intelligence 
as a quality that someone has. You're intelligent, where your abilities might be in certain areas. And so let's look at his three theories, triarchic three theories of mental abilities. He believed that we had analytic intelligence. This is solving problems. This is people who do well in school. Your academic intelligence. Um, you know how to play the game of school. Creative intelligence. Um, these are our artists, um, people who think outside of the box, people who can come up with creative solutions. Um, I have to tell you, I went through the Lighthouse program, and I have very good analytic intelligence. I know how to play the school game. My brain works that way. I'm not that creative. And they used to always try and tell us that we were creative, and I kept telling them, no, I know school stuff. Creative is not my thing. You know, and it was kind of awkward to me, and this is maybe why I embrace a lot of Sternberg's theories. And then practical intelligence, common sense, street smart. And I think we can all think of people who might have one of these and might be lacking in two, or might have two of these and be lacking in one of them, or might have all three, and I'm sure there's some people out there who are lacking in all three. Um, some more concrete ways of displaying these type of intelligences, people with analytic intelligence, um, they analyze, they compare, they evaluate, um, all very good thinking skills when teachers put things in front of you. Practical. These people apply, they use, they know how to function in the world. And creative are the inventors, the designers, the artists. This is an interesting slide that um, was stolen from someone. And if you look at this, I'm not going to go through all of this, but look at Winnie the Pooh, for example. Winnie the Pooh didn't have any book learning. He was not very academically intelligent, or it wasn't um, an ability he had. He was not very practically intelligent. Okay. However, he was very good at coping in the world despite both of these. So I will leave it to you to push pause and look at these more if you feel that this would be helpful to you. And then last but not least, emotional intelligence. This was a kind of newfangled idea back again when I was in college and in the 90s it got a lot of press. I had an old magazine I used to use that had it on the front. It was a time or a Newsweek. And this is your ability to understand people and to understand yourself and control your emotions, uh, perceive other people's emotions, um, really get people. And we all can think of people who just don't have that skill. And so this was a big idea. I'm not going to spend much time on it, but just so you're aware of what the term is. So this completes my third PowerPoint that I am presenting to you. Again, I hope these are getting a little bit better. I'm getting a little more comfortable. Not the same without being actually in front of people, but let's just go with it and do the best we can. I hope this was somewhat helpful to you. And um, hang in there. Keep learning your psych.